Hey guys, so today I have another CPU cooler uh, to review, and it is the Cooler Master Gemini M4. Um, this box is a little different. This is from Japan, and they call it the Fujin Slimu here, but it is the same cooler. It's a low profile cooler. Um, cooler Master actually says it's a super low profile. Uh, so I'm going to open it up and show it to you guys. Now this cooler is 60 millimeters tall, or well, 59 millimeters tall. And it supports uh, all the Entel sockets up to 2066. Though I don't know that it's a smart idea to use this with a 10 plus core CPU as it is a small form factor CPU or CPU cooler. There are four heat pipes a 120 millimeter fan on it it's a slim fan so it's 15 millimeters tall and like I said the cooler is 59 millimeters total height so from the base to the top of the fan um, you have your four pin PWM and Cooler Master does include all kinds of brackets and thermal paste and everything you're going to need to mount this as well as instructions on how to mount it. So we're gonna put this on a 4790K, which is a quad core eight thread. And we're gonna see how it cools. On Cooler Master's website, they have a picture of a of this cooler, the Gemini M4, on an ITX board. And it's inter it looks like from the picture that these, these clips here, that the fan, uses to actually clip to the cooler are interfering with the RAM sticks. So I decided to toss that out on an ITX board. Um, this is the phonetic CPU cooler I did a review on. You can check that out. And we're just going to take this off, put this on. Memory is already here. We're going to see if uh, it does in fact get in the way or it was just some weird thing. But from the look of it, it does seem like it might get in the way so we're gonna find out and I know I should take off the CPU paste but that's not the whole point of this the whole point of this is to see if it, it gets in the way of the memory there's no brackets on here I just want to put it on the socket and see if it does in fact get in the way so we're just going to put it on there and it looks like it clears pretty well let's get you another shot of that here's the cooler up close and like I said it's not actually on there I didn't put any brackets on there I just put the base plate of the cooler against the CPU to see if the memory would clear and there's quite a lot of space there so there's plenty of room for the memory. Now I can imagine if you had some higher profile memory uh, might cause an issue. These are just bare cheap sticks. They have no heat spreader or anything on them. Now if you had memory with like really tall heat sinks it might become an issue. On an MATX or ATX board you're, it's probably not even a consideration. It's because the memory spacing is further away from the CPU. It would be like over here. But yeah, it clears all the VRM heat sinks, which this board has quite a few, actually decent heat sinks. Clears the M.2 heat sink at the bottom there by the PCI E right there. And it has a good distance from the PCIe slot. So you're not gonna have any issues with any video cards. Um, it even clears the SATA cable ports on the board and uh, doesn't really get in the way of anything. So it fits really well on this board. And this is, uh, of course, an ITX board, so it's gonna have tighter, everything's gonna be much tighter together. For any other sort of board, ATX, extended ATX, uh, micro ATX, you're probably not gonna have any issues at all. So that's definitely a good thing. Thumbs up for Cooler Master for doing that. So for installation, it's pretty straightforward. You have three different sets of brackets. Uh, one for AMD, 
one for uh, 2011, and one for 2066. Um, something to note, these AMD brackets will not work with AM4, it doesn't seem like. Um, Cooler Master has on their compatibility for this cooler only AM3 um, sockets and the coolers. The So, installation is pretty easy. You have three different sets of brackets. Um, so installation is pretty easy. You have three different sets of these brackets. One for Intel's um, 1150 series, 2011 series, and one for all the older AMD sockets. Um, Cooler Master does say that this is not compatible with AM4. I don't know for sure. I don't have an AM4 board to actually see. Um, and I don't know if the AM4 socket actually lines up with the AM3 socket. So uh, you should probably do some research if you want wanting this cooler for AM4. Or just get one that Cooler Master says supports AM4. So installation is really easy. There's four screws. So two brackets, four screws. You screw from the actual base plate right here. Base plate. Put the screw in. Put the bracket on the other side of the base plate. And you screw it in. Super simple. Alright. So now we have our screws in. And our brackets on. So this... this uh, CPU cooler is a little bit different. You actually uh, fasten it on from the back of the motherboard. So here's your base plate. And this goes on the back of the board. You put it, the screws through there, and you fasten these nuts on. So let's do that. So we have our screws in. You put that on there, kind of like that. We're gonna put the bolts on. And these, actually the screws that the CPU cooler comes with are kind of annoying. The, the ones that actually go through the uh, CPU socket here, because they're on springs and they're not straight, they turn. I guess uh, Cooler Master does that for to combat any tolerances the motherboard manufacturers may have with their screw distance. At least that would be my guess. But it makes for installing the cooler a little bit annoying. So this cooler comes with this little uh, thumb screw bolt socket thing here. Let's get a picture of it. It's just a socket with a screw. Phillips head. But you can you can get it really well with your thumbs and that's what it looks like mounted on a ATX board again still clears memory everything is all good and there's no issues installing it uh, even this motherboard it has really giant VRM heat sinks with fans in it and there's no there's no issues so we're going to plug this in and do some stress tests do some overclocking and see what this cooler can do on the 4790K. Okay, so we have a cooler on the CPU and we've been doing IDA stress tests for about 40 minutes here and our max temps are mid 60s, high 60s, so like 65, max temp is 69 and this is all stock settings. So we're going to restart and uh, see what the cooler can do with some little overclocking. Okay, so we're back and I have it overclocked stably. This is the highest overclock I could get. It's 4.6 gigahertz at uh, 1.28 volt. So 
that would raise the uh, TDP of the CPU up quite a bit probably close to 100 watts or so if not a little bit more um, and the CPU cooler well it's not doing great I mean it's not a giant cooler it's in the 80s mid 70s low 80s and uh, it seems to be doing an okay job So we just got done with the uh, CPU testing with this uh, Cooler Master Gemini M4. And I was actually surprised. Uh, for such a low profile cooler, it only has four heat pipes. It actually cooled off the CPU really well, even overclocked. It's a decent cooler, especially for a low profile cooler. I can definitely see someone putting this in a very small form factor build with uh, 8700K maybe overclocking it a few hundred megahertz and it would do fine. Um, I did manage to get the 4790K I tested with this one to 4.8 gigahertz which was nearly 1.3 volts and it was about high 70s so it was usable. Um, you naturally want it cooler um, but it did the job. It wasn't very noisy um, actually, I couldn't hear it over the GPU, uh, but that's because I have an open uh, test bed. So, you know, you can hear all the fans. The heat pipes actually make direct contact with the CPU. So it can, del it can get rid of the heat much quicker than if the, fins, the heat pipes are only in the fins. And also, the, the fan is clipped on with these uh, little wire pieces. So you could actually replace this fan with another fan, uh, maybe you don't like this fan, maybe you want a better fan, you know, maybe you want the, that RGB in your computer, you can just totally replace it with another, another fan put on top of here. It's a $40 cooler, so don't expect that much from it. It's good. Stock, it'll be perfectly fine. Mild overclock, it'll be perfectly fine. Now, if you're trying to get the 5 gigahertz mark, probably not going to be fine. Get like a Noctua um, or a all-in-one is even better. A big all-in-one is better. And but if you just want small form factor, maybe turbo boost all the time. You know, you just overclock your CPU to turbo boost turbo boost levels. This is gonna be completely fine. It's, it's quite decent cooler. Um, it's just surprising for its size. So this has been the video for the Cooler Master Gemini M4.